Today, we answer the question, can you multiply two complex numbers? And the answer is, yes, we can. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, I'm so glad. Let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Ha <laughs> ha! Hey, they are not social distancing. We need to speak to them about that. Stay away from each other, guys. <clears throat> All right. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, this video um, has uh, uh, built into it a little uh, um, test to see if folks are watching the entire video. Uh, the assignment will be described in two separate pieces with no indication that they are to be combined into one. The assignment is one assignment. You don't have to do it in two parts. It's one assignment, but it will be given to you in two parts, discreetly, looking like two separate assignments when it's really just one combined. Clear? Clear. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's move on here. Oh, yes. Warning. Watch the entire video. Moving on. All right. Multiplying two complex numbers. Let's start by multiplying two pure imaginary numbers. Remember what a pure imaginary number is. Uh, 4 plus 3i, that's not a pure imaginary number. It is indeed complex, but it's not pure imaginary. It has a real part to it. This, 3i, that is a pure imaginary number. There's no real part added on. This is a pure imaginary number. Multiply two pure imaginary numbers is very easy, um, but there's that little trick to it, of course. It's not like multiplying real numbers. Because 3i times 4i is, and don't you dare tell me it's 12i. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know how to multiply. How would you multiply 3x times 4x? Would it not be 12x squared? Well, the same thing here. This is 12 i times i, or 12i squared. But you know the secret. Mm -hmm. i squared is actually negative 1. So this becomes 12 times negative 1, which gives us negative 12. So 3i times 4i gives you the real number, negative 12. Mr. Peter! What? Since when can you multiply two positives and get a negative? Oh, did I multiply two positives and get a negative? I'm so sorry. I'm only sorry that you're bothered by it. Um, but no, there's nothing to be sorry about because, yes, in the imaginary number world, and only in the imaginary number world, can you multiply a positive by a positive and get a negative. That's kind of cool. So 3i times 4i is negative 12. Again, why negative? Because the i times i changed it from the old positive to being this new fangled negative. There we have it. 7i squared. Hey, same thing. 7 squared is 49, but i squared becomes negative 1, so we get negative 49. Since when can you square anything and get a negative answer? Well, only in the world of imaginary numbers can you do that. Ordinarily, in the real number world, we've always said that if you square a number, it always turns positive. But not so with imaginary numbers. You square an imaginary number, it becomes negative. Pretty bizarre. Now, what about multiplying two non-pure, non-pure, two impure, that sounds kind of weird, two impure imaginary numbers, two complex numbers, any two complex numbers. All right, guess what we're going to use? Yeah, I think you guessed it. I can hear you thinking across the internet waves. We're going to use foil. Oh no, I hate foil! Why in the world do you hate foil? It's so easy. Remember how foil works. You've got a binomial here, or a thing that looks like a binomial. These are not binomials. These are complex numbers. 
But you've got a thing that looks like a binomial here, and a thing that looks like a binomial here. Foyle says we multiply the firsts, we multiply the outers, we multiply the inners, and we multiply the lasts, and then put it all together. Firsts, outers, inners, lasts. Yay, complex numbers. Firsts, that's 4 times 7. Outers, that's 4 times 2i. Now, ideally, we would keep that in our head for a moment, but I'll write it down just to make everything crystal clear. Inners, that's 3i times 7. And lasts, that's 3i times 2i. That's where the fun starts. 3i times 2i is going to be 6i squared. But what does a positive 6i squared turn into? What does positive 6i squared turn into? Positive 6i squared, that i squared becomes negative 1, which means that it's not plus 6, but it's minus 6. The folks who don't pay close attention to this usually leave an answer that says something like plus 6. Either they say 6i or they say 6i squared, and they wonder why they lost points. Because i squared is negative 1. 6 times negative 1 is minus 6. Now we combine our like terms. I've got my 28. Minus 6 is 22. And then I have my 8i plus 21i is 29i. Now here's the other cool thing about this. Ordinarily, back in the, back in the real number world, if we took something like um, 3 plus uh, 2x, let's do the other way around, 2, um, 2x plus 3, and if we multiplied it by, say, uh, x plus 1, what do we get? We normally get a trinomial. We multiply a binomial by a binomial. Most of the time we get a trinomial. It would be what? 2x squared for the firsts. Then the outers, 2x. The inners, 3x. That's 2x plus 3x is 5x. And then the lasts would be 3 times 1. That's going to be plus 3. We get a trinomial. Nothing you can do about it. Binomial times binomial normally gives you a trinomial. These guys don't look like that guy. This has an x squared in it. These don't. Why do I point that out? Because back here, the cool thing is, you multiply what looks like a binomial times what, a, what looks like a binomial, and you are going to get another thing that looks like a binomial every time. In other words, a complex number times a complex number always gives another complex number, a plus bi. That's pretty cool. That's why I said in the previous video that the set of complex numbers is closed under multiplication. That means if you multiply two complex numbers, you're not going to get something else. You're going to get another complex number. Hey, thinking that through a little bit more just for fun here. Are the binomials closed under multiplication? If you multiply a binomial times a binomial, do you always get another binomial? No. We got a trinomial. So the binomials are not closed under multiplication. But complex numbers that look like binomials, they are closed under multiplication. That's pretty cool. And the more you think about it, the cooler it gets. All right, so that's how you multiply two complex numbers. The trick is basically this. If you can just remember that they work exactly like binomials, or even exactly like monomials, except that when you have an i times i, it turns into negative 1. When you have the i times i, it turns into a negative 1. So that 3i times 2i is actually a minus 6, not a plus 6. 
And please note, be careful, when I changed the i squared into a negative 1, is there still an i here anymore? No, the i is gone. Okay. Then we will always be connecting these guys. I shouldn't say connect, that's very unmathematical. We will combine these guys, and we will, of course, combine these guys, and we'll end up with a complex number in standard form, A plus B. Nice. All right, let's try this one. Oh, no, <laughs> let's not try that one. All right, oh, new definition. Moving on to something a little bit different now. Definition of conjugate. We've seen that word before in a different context. You may remember when we uh, were working with uh, numbers like this, 3 plus square root of 2. We said the conjugate of 3 plus square root of 2. Do you remember? Think back. Think with me. Conjugate. 3 plus square root of 2. Oh, yes. To form the conjugate, all you do is change the sign. The conjugate of 3 plus square root of 2 was 3 minus square root of 2. Do you remember what we used that for? Pretty neat. We used that because when we multiply a number, uh, an irrational number, by an irrational number's conjugate, the answer always turned out to be rational. All right, now, the conjugate of the complex number a plus bi is, yes, a minus bi. That's all. Uh, likewise, the reverse, the conjugate of a minus bi is going to be a plus bi. It works both ways, of course. Now, what are we going to do with that? Why do we care? Oh, uh, don't forget to put the two parts of the assignment together. Uh, I won't say it again unless I say it again. What's the conjugate of 3 plus 4i? And as I say here, it can't get any easier than this. If the book asks you, or if on the test I ask you, what's the conjugate of 3 plus 4i? All you do is go, oh, isn't that just 3 minus 4i? Can it really be that easy? Yes, it can be that easy. The conjugate of 3 plus 4i is just 3 minus 4i. What's the conjugate of negative 4 minus 7i? Oh, is it 4 plus 7i? No, it's not. You only change the sign in the middle. The conjugate, and I cannot use an equal sign. I'm not claiming these are equal. I cannot put an equal sign here, no. I'll just put an arrow say here comes the result. The conjugate of negative 4 minus 7i is going to be negative 4 plus 7i. The only thing that gets changed is that minus turns into a plus. Everything else stays the same. The negative 4 is still a negative 4. Remember the conjugate of a plus bi is a minus bi. The a does not change. What's, oh, what's the conjugate of just plain 5i? Well, to answer that, we put 5i into standard form. Standard form would be 0 plus 5i, because there is no real part, right? So the conjugate of 0 plus 5i would have to be 0 minus 5i, better known as just negative 5i. So the conjugate of 5i is just negative 5i. In standard form, 0 minus 5i. What's the conjugate of 6? Hmm, does 6 have a conjugate? It's negative 6. No, it's not negative 6. Think about it. How do you put 6 into complex standard form? Is it not 6 plus 0i? So what's the conjugate of 6 plus 0i? 6 minus 0i. Does that make any difference? No. Therefore, the conjugate of 6 is 6. A real number's conjugate is itself. Yes, uh, you could say a real number does have a conjugate, but the real number 6, its conjugate is 6. The real number negative 14, its conjugate is still negative 14, because you're simply changing a plus 0i into a minus 0i. What difference does that make? None at all. That's why you don't hear about conjugates of real numbers like 5 or negative 2 because it, it's a non-issue. Let's see if we can find out why we care about conjugates. Oh, 
um, page 329, numbers 4 through 14 even, is the assignment. <coughs> so, hey, shall we dwell on that again for a moment, make sure it's crystal clear? In fact, I'll pause there. And if you've watched the whole video, you know the secret. So what's the special, what's so special about conjugates? Let's multiply 5 plus 7i times 5 minus 7i. All right. These are conjugates. Let's do it first the hard way, then I'm going to show you the tricky, really cool, easy way. Mm -hmm. The hard way would be to use FOIL. FOIL is hard? No, FOIL is not hard, but it's harder than the shortcut trick I'm going to show you. First, 5 times 5, 25. Outers, negative 35i. Inners, positive 35i. And then the last, be careful, 7 times negative 7 being negative 49. That's negative 49 I squared, but that I squared changes the negative 49 into a positive 49. Notice, of course, that these two guys cancel. That's the beauty of this. When you multiply conjugates, the outers and the inners will always cancel. Always. Look back here and think about it, you realize, oh, they will. Yes, they will. And the eyes at the end when multiplied will always turn real. Always. Because you've got an I times an I. It cancels out to a negative one. The real number, negative one. Therefore, when you multiply two con conjugates, you always get a real number. In this case, 25 plus 49. You always get a real number when you multiply two complex conjugates. That can have some special uses for us. Uh, do I have the rule here? Yeah, the general rule must be here. A plus bi times a minus bi. Let's go ahead and use FOIL and see what happens. A plus bi times a minus bi will be first a squared, outers minus a b i, inners positive a b i, you know what's going to happen with those, and then the lasts will be a minus b squared i squared. But what happens to minus b squared i squared? The i squared becomes negative 1. That cancels out and changes this to a plus. These two guys disappear. We're left with a squared plus b squared. There's your bottom line. That's the shortcut. To multiply two conjugates, all you do is square this guy, square that guy, and add the answers. Now, don't confuse that with our old rule. Remember what happened when we just did the real bina bina bleh, binomial A plus B times A minus B. Remember what happens there? FOIL causes the outers and inners to disappear. We get A squared minus B squared, our old friend. This is the same thing except the I times I makes that minus turn into a plus. So back in the old world of binomials, these guys multiplied to give a squared minus b squared. But in the world of complex numbers, a complex number times its conjugate always gives a squared plus b squared. Wait a minute, how did that turn into a plus? Because we had i times i, which is i squared, which is negative 1. That changed the minus into a plus. So gloriously simple. This, by the way, is the definition of conjugates. 
We multiply conjugates, we get the real number a squared plus b squared. Uh, yeah, there's your warning. Read that for just a moment. Don't forget to put those two assignment parts together into one larger assignment. This is a test to see if you watched the whole video. All right. Uh, conjugates. <laughs> uh, we can use the glorious shortcut now. Square the first term, that's 49. Square the second coefficient, that's 4. And we always add done. We get 53. It's over. Conjugates. Multiply the a parts, that's 25. Oh, but wait a minute, what's the b part? What's the coefficient of i? It is 1. It is 1. So 1 times 1 being 1, but we always do what? We always add. We get 26. Done. Ha! <laughs> Isn't that gloriously simple? Uh, what's that for? What's down here? Oh, I just uh, thought, let's play around with this a little bit. Uh, let's uh, see what happens if we multiply 3 by its conjugate. Well, 3 in complex standard form is 3 plus 0i. Let's multiply it by the conjugate 3 minus 0i, and just play with that and see what happens. What do we get? We get 9 plus 0 times 0 being 0, we get 9. So the real number 3 times the real number 3, even when we use the rules for complex numbers, we still get an answer of 9, no surprise. I think that's kind of cool. We're not changing any of the old rules. Even if you use the complex number rules, 3 times 3 is still 9. Nice. The system works. It works beautifully and consistently. Now, let's look at this. The last concept for the day. I don't know how long this is going, but we're having fun, so who cares, right? This is division. No, it's not. It's a fraction. Oh, come on. It's division. You know what a fraction bar means. It means divide. Division of complex numbers. How do we do negative 5 plus 9i divided by 1 minus i? Here's the trick. We can't leave that imaginary number in the denominator. One might say, well, that's all there is to it. That's it. Well, no, because this is not proper form. You can't leave the imaginary number in the denominator. Sorry. So what are we going to do then? We're going to very cleverly multiply, just like we did back with the um, uh, uh, like 3 plus square root of 2, and we tried to divide it by 5 minus square root of, uh, uh, of uh, 4 or something. Uh, that's a bad example. Uh, 5 minus square root of 7. Uh, we multiplied by what? So we multiplied by 5 plus square root of 7 over 5 plus square root of 7. We multiplied by the conjugate. Well, we do exactly the same thing here, so this is really nothing new. We multiply numerator and denominator by a fancy name for 1, which is the conjugate of the denominator over itself. Legal because what is 1 plus i over 1 plus i? You learned in third grade that a number divided by itself is 1. So we're just multiplying by 1. What difference does that make? It, cre it produces the same value, but it looks different. So now, the denominator is the easy part. 1 squared is 1. Always plus the coefficient here. 1 squared is 1. Our denominator becomes just 2. 1 squared plus 1 squared. 1 plus 1, 2. The numerator we've got to go to a little more trouble for. To multiply the numerators, yeah, we've got to use FOIL. Firsts. Negative 5. Outers, negative 5i. Inners, 9i. Watch out for the lasts. 9 times 1 is 9 times i squared. 9i squared. What does 9i squared become? 9i squared becomes 9 times negative 1. It becomes negative 9. So we have minus 9. Then we uh, simplify our numerator and we're done. Negative 5 minus 9, negative 14. 
negative 5i plus 9i is plus 4i divided by 2. But one last detail here. We don't like to leave our result in that form. We're going to divide both of these guys by 2. I call this splitting it into its two parts to make it look like a complex number in standard form. Right now, this does not look like a plus b i. I want to be able to identify a and b. So I'll split it, negative 14 over 2, plus 4 over 2, i. There we have our final result, where we have complex standard form, a is negative 7, b is 2. Done. Another example. What do we do? We multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. That becomes 3 minus 5i, 3 minus 5i. Folks, please stay awake. Same thing, numerator and denominator. Just like you learned in third grade, if you're going to change a fraction, you multiply numerator and denominator by what? The same thing. These must be the same. And what are they to be? They are to be the conjugate of this guy we're trying to get rid of. Again, the denominator becomes the easiest part. I like to do that first. It kind of builds confidence. All we have to do is square the first term, square the second term, and what do we put in the middle? Always a plus. That's the beauty of this. It makes it really easy. So we're going to have 9 plus 25. We'll have 34 here. And, of course, I make it sound like it's more complicated and long than it really is. All I do is say, oh, 9 plus 25. 34. You don't have to write this down. Just 9 plus 25 is 34. It takes about 4 seconds to come up with your denominator. Numerator, yeah, you got to slow down. Sorry, you got to use foil. First, 2 times 3, 6. Outers, negative 10i. You could do that part in your head. Inners, negative 9i. You could do that part in your head. And then combine those in your head. And then, watch out. We have negative times negative. That would, would be positive 15, but it's positive 15i squared. What happens to a plus 15i squared? The i squared makes it turn into a minus 15. Yes, we have a minus 15 at the end here. We're not done until we have combined stuff. I see 6. Minus 15 will be negative 9. I see negative 10i minus 9 more i is minus 19i. Do we change that to a plus? No, we don't change that. I don't see any i squareds here. You don't change that to a plus. It's negative 10 of those guys minus 9 of those guys is negative 19 of those guys. But again, we are expected, we are required to put this into complex standard form. So we will do again what I call splitting it. We will split it by taking the negative 9 and put it over the 34. And then we'll take the minus, minus and the 19 and put it over the 34 also. And stick an i out there and we've got it. Negative 9 34 minus 19 34 so now we have complex standard form where we can clearly see that A is negative 9 34 and B is negative 19 34 Nice. Nothing to it. So, one last thought. How do you find the reciprocal of a complex number? Well, doesn't the reciprocal mean you flip it like this? Uh-huh, yeah. So the reciprocal is 1 over 2 minus 3i. But we can't leave it that way. Again, you can't have an imaginary number in the denominator of a fraction. So what do we do? We multiply by 2 plus 3i over 2 plus 3i, the conjugate of the denominator. These are really easy. Finding reciprocals of complex numbers. You should hope that I put a lot of these on the test because they're really easy. Why are they so easy? Because it's always going to be 1 times this guy. 2 plus 3i. And then here, it's going to be 4 plus, always plus, 4 plus 9. Done. Well, we need to split it. No big deal. 
two thirteenths plus three thirteenths i. A is two thirteenths, b is two th or three thirteenths. Again, we find that if we divide two complex numbers, guess what we get? Another complex number. So again, that set of complex numbers is closed under division, because if you divide two complex numbers, you don't get something that's outside. The box is closed. You divide two complex numbers, you get another thing that's in that box. You get another complex number. The set of complex numbers is closed under addition, subtraction, multiplication, and addition. Or, uh, di sorry, division. And so, uh, the assignment, 329, 16 through 26 even. And remember to heed the earlier warnings. And I think that is all we have. I'll leave that there to cook for a while on your screen. And we're done. You may uh, sign off at any time. See you later.